In the first video I did about nested dielectrics, I used a couple of images that had caustics as part of the rendering, and I received a couple of questions about that. Caustics are the highly focused patterns of light through transmissive surfaces or off highly reflective surfaces like sharp metals. But by default, Blender is not really going to give them to you very easily until you make a couple of changes. And when you have a properly set up nested dielectric, the caustics are going to have a much greater chance of showing up. So let's take a look at this. In this particular rendering right here, we, we can kind of see the caustics a little bit, but they're sort of broad and diffuse. So the first thing that is going to happen is we need to make a change to the render properties. And by default, out of the box, Blender is doing something that is obscuring caustics. Caustics tend to come from very bright and focused light sources, and those very bright light sources have a propensity to produce a lot of noise in the scene. Sometimes you'll hear the term sparklies or fireflies, and Blender tries to obscure those through a mechanism called filter glossy. So when we come way down here under clamping, you can see filter glossy is set to 1.0. So what this is doing is it's making every sharply reflective surfaces like these metal rings behave from a light standpoint as if they were fully rough surfaces. So any light that scatters off them is going to scatter off them as if they were a diffuse surface. And that goes a long way to getting rid of some of the real pesky noise situations you can have coming from a caustics generating surface. You don't want to have that enabled though when you really want the caustics to appear. So what you do is you come down to filter glossy and you set it to zero. Now, when you do that, suddenly the surfaces are going to behave exactly as they are configured from a material standpoint, meaning from the material's roughness, the caustics will appear according to how rough or sharp the surface is set in the principled BSDF. So you can see now in the rings, we clearly get some of those caustic patterns appearing and we can kind of see a little bit in some other areas you get a hint of something more focused down here but the next thing i want to bring your attention to is that if you are using gpu rendering gpu rendering is using a generalized random sampling system you'll often hear the term monte carlo sampling that's a sort of randomized sampling mechanism that many renderers use but that will still have a hard time finding caustics because caustics are often produced, especially through refractive surfaces via complex pathways through the surface. And randomized sampling has a difficult time tracking those complex pathways. So if you really want caustics to appear, you have to turn off GPU rendering, go to CPU rendering, and then you're suddenly going to see a path guiding option appear. Make sure path guiding is enabled, and that will enable a more sophisticated sampling mechanism that will specifically be able to track and see and account for these complex pathways through refractive objects and even metallic surfaces. And that's exactly what we see right here. The downside is that currently, path guiding does not use GPU rendering. It's a CPU only thing. But this is what will give you the most strong pronounced caustics. Path guiding, again, is a very smart technique as it's sampling the environment. It takes note of rays that produce very strong contributions to the scene, and it tries to replicate that pathway back to the light source to better sample the light source, and that gives us better caustics. While open path guiding is really going to help bring out the caustics that are there, it's still not specifically designed as a caustics solver. Some 3D renderers have used techniques like photon mapping, but Cycles doesn't do that. It's all built into the path tracing mechanism, and path guiding goes a long way to help to resolve caustics, but it's still not as good as something like Metropolis Light Transport that some really high-end ray tracers use that are really good at resolving these caustics. And the other last thing I'll say about this is not every object is going to be a good caustics producing object. Some things you'll just seem to really struggle to get caustics out of will be the nature of the object. The other thing that I would suggest is if you do come back down to filter glossy, there's clamping here under indirect light. The default is 10 
and caustics tend to be on the brighter side. And this is a clamping mechanism. And the higher this value goes, the less clamping it's going to do for these bright contributions to the scene. Typically, I have mine set to 15, and that will tend to allow caustics coming from very bright light sources to manifest themselves better in the scene. You can totally shut it off altogether by setting it to zero, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because you will have a greater propensity to have very strong fireflies that will have a hard time resolving and going away. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. Here's a situation that you would very easily find yourself running into in Blender with its default settings. So you're using GPU rendering and you don't know to change fill to glossy. And this is what you get. We've got an HDRI image that's got a bright sunspot. So it's going to produce very strong directional light, which should produce caustics. And you only get just sort of a basic hint of it. So you, th you think, well, I've heard that path guiding will give me better caustics and you flip over and you get this rendering, which is almost the same. I mean, it's a little different, but it's not really giving you caustics. So you go in and you set filter glossy to zero and with path guiding, you get this. So those are the two combinations, filter glossy set to zero and renderer set to path guiding. But you think I want the speed of GPU rendering. And so you flip it back to GPU, but with filter glossy set to zero and you go back to this. It's, you can see that there's a little bit more formation with GPU, but it's just not producing the strong caustics. Now, in some cases, depending on the lighting condition, GPU rendering will still give you some degree of caustics. So it's, it, it might happen, but let's go ahead and look at some other examples. Now, here's an interesting example. We get a little bit of caustics with GPU rendering, but as soon as we switch over to path guiding and CPU rendering, we get this. That's actually quite a bit of interesting detail that shows up when you're using path guiding with filter glossy set to zero. Now here's one where we're initially seeing GPU rendering and we are getting some caustics. So this is what I was saying before. In some situations, GPU rendering is going to give you caustics, but as soon as we switch over to path guiding with filter glossy set to zero, we get this. So path guiding still amplifies the effect. And from a performance standpoint, this was rendered on my M4 Pro Mac Mini, and in GPU mode, it took about 40 seconds. CPU mode, it took about five minutes. So there's obviously a performance difference, but it just depends on what it is that you're wanting. If you really want those caustics, for now, you have to switch over to CPU rendering. Here's an interesting one. This is actually GPU rendering, and we do get some caustics, which you're gonna get if you've got an HDRI image like this that has very high contrast between dark and bright areas and some large bright lights. But as soon as we switch this over to path guiding, we get this. So path guiding brings out all the interesting sparkly details, and it does emphasize the caustics overall. And then, of course, another of this uh, basic perfume bottle. This is with GPU rendering. You get just a hint of the caustics over here. We can see a little bit of it. But as soon as we turn on path guiding, we get this. That's really quite substantial. So the detail of the caustics is going to be directly related to the size and brightness of the light source, which in this case is basically a sun source in an HDRI image, which is going to be really small, and it's going to be consistent with the nature of the shadows also. The shadows are quite defined and sharp, and so the caustics will be defined and sharp. This was just a quick summary of ways that you can get caustics in the scene.